Ecamm Live version 4.2 has just been released and as always it is a great update with some excellent new features and in this video I'm going to be running through all of those features for you. Uh, in case you are completely new to Ecamm, Ecamm Live is the live production software for the Mac. Um, it is the software that I use to make all of the videos for my channel in one take with no edits, hence the name Take One Tech by the way. Um, and it's also the software that I use for live streaming and also live production in my Zoom meetings, webinars and workshops as well. Honestly, it's been a complete game changer for me, uh, say no more, but let's dive straight into the features, shall we, the new updates. Um, so uh, the first thing and the first lot of updates, I guess, are related to live video and live streaming. Obviously, we've had live video in Ecamm. Uh, you can go into your options menu and change the stream shape if you want to just record vertical video. But how about if you want to maybe record or stream in 16 by 9, you know, horizontal format, um, but you intend to repurpose the video later and maybe chop out the center section to uh, to use in a vertical video as well. Or maybe you want to do multi-streaming, which we can do in Ecamm, obviously, uh, to stream to a horizontal platform, but also a vertical platform as well. Well, wouldn't it be nice to know where the kind of like safe zone is on the screen uh, for that vertical vertical content. Well, uh, enter their first new feature, which is the vertical video safe guide. <laughs> and this is something which you can activate by pressing option command V or alternative going to the options menu and you'll see it in that uh, drop down there. Uh, but what this is going to do is put something like this on your screen. Now your uh, the the people viewing are not going to see this. But if you were looking at my Ecamm screen right now, um, then you would see something like this. As I say, it doesn't go out in the broadcast or the recording at all. Uh, but it is just intended to be there on your screen for you to be able to see where that safe zone is. So if you are recording anything, keep it in these bounds and you'll know that when you just crop out that middle section, um, then it's all going to be nicely centered or whatever on the screen. If you are doing multi-streaming to both a horizontal and a vertical platform at the same time, um, then you would just need to be conscious of where those comments were going uh, so that the uh, the comments were going to be uh, positioned right for both the vertical viewers in this narrow frame and also in the uh, the horizontal as well. Uh, so that is the first thing, the vertical safe zone guide. Um, uh, the next thing then is related to uh, the destinations and specifically Instagram. This is something that's not new. We've had this uh, for a while now. Um, but in case you are new to Instagram, um, then I will just quickly run through some uh, minor changes that have been made to this. Um, so first of all, if you open up your Ecamm Live preferences, go to your destinations and here you can click on add destination. Uh, when you do that, you'll see the option to be able to select your Instagram. Uh, and when you do that, then you're going to see a window that looks like this. Now there has been a minor change in here in 4.2 and that is uh, previously as well as having the uh, RTMP key and uh, uh, stream key sorry I should say and stream URL uh, now we've just got the server URL in there and then you can give it a nickname uh, you can also add in your Instagram account from here note that this does need to be an account on Instagram that is linked to a Facebook account but assuming that it is linked to a Facebook page um, then if I press the right book button on my stream deck, <laughs> there we go. Uh, assuming it is linked, then you will see this little pop up here. You can drop down and select the particular account that you uh, that you want. Um, but for the server URL that you can see there, uh, you're going to need to get that from uh, from Instagram. Ecamm have defaulted to a particular URL here, but it may well be different from you. And the way that you find this is if you go over to your web browser and type in Instagram.com, log into your Instagram account from here, uh, and then click on this little create button down here uh, for the longest time, all you could do here was basically post images. But uh, recently, they opened up this live streaming capability to the majority of people now, I believe. Uh, so when you click on live video, it is then going to pop up this window here. Now, uh, I don't believe that you can schedule out your live streams to uh, to Instagram at the moment. And there isn't just sort of one uh, stream key that you're going to have every time. Um, so you will need to just do this on a stream by stream basis. But once you come in here, though, um, then you can type in a title. Uh, you can also uh, type in the or select the audience type, I should say. So whether it's public, public or practice, uh, just note that. Uh, and here is another new feature in Ecamm uh, in 4.2 is that we now have comments coming in from Instagram directly into uh, into Ecamm in the same way that you know Facebook or YouTube comments do. Uh, but note that that is only available when you are selecting public. So if you want to do a practice and practice with the comments, the comments won't co come through on that practice. But assuming that you select public, 
Uh, then from there, it's going to open up this window. Now, this is something you might want to just go through, even if you're not going to be streaming, um, because what you're going to want to gr grab from here is the stream URL. Uh, this actually will be the same every time, uh, but the stream key will be different for each individual stream. Uh, so you want to come in here and grab the stream URL, um, and then you will come back over to your setup in Ecamm and just drop that into where it says server URL, and that will be uh, added in there. Uh, and then once you've finished, uh, click on the little add button um, and then that's it you will have connected your uh, Instagram account in Ecamm coming back then over to here uh, the next thing to take a look at is as I say the uh, stream key uh, so this is going to be specific for that particular live stream so you'll only come and grab this when you're actually ready to uh, to go live uh, so then where do you put this well this is what's now moved in 4.2 uh, and where it's moved to is if I just pull up my little interface here if you click on the new uh, if you first of all make sure you've got stream selected uh, then click on the little new button down there um, and that's going to then uh, give you this little pop-up uh, and here you can select your destination. So if it isn't already, just click the little add button, uh, select Instagram, and then you'll see down there, this is the new feature in 4.2 is we've got this place for the stream key there. So you'll basically just come and grab the stream key from over this side, uh, come back over to, uh, to Ecamm, uh, drop it in there if I can point into the right place um, and then add it in. Now, uh, once you actually hit the go live, once you're ready to go live, you can see the go live button down at the bottom here somewhere. Once you hit that button, uh, what's going to happen is uh, when you come back over here, it's not actually going to go live to Instagram, as in on your feed directly. Uh, but what you'll see is over on the little preview window, if I point the right way, uh, you can see that preview over on the left there. Um, that's where you'll see the stream then coming into here. So you would need to have this browser window open when you are going live to Instagram. You'll see the little preview come on there. Uh, and then what you'll do is you will... Uh, just tap on uh, this one up at the top here to uh, select go live. And so that's where you're going to actually initiate the physical stream out onto your public uh, uh, profile. Uh, similarly, when you are ready to stop streaming, then you'll also then see a little end stream button there and you'll need to end it there and then also end it in Ecamm as well. Um, so uh, yeah, that's just a few little points about streaming to, uh, to Instagram. Uh, whilst we're talking about comments, incidentally, uh, there is also a, uh, new commenting support for Twitter as well. So if you are on Twitter or X, I still call it Twitter, um, then comments will also now come in from that, whether vertical or horizontal, but, uh, comments will come through as will also, um, join messages. Now, the next thing is related to uh, recording. And what we've got is in your Ecamm Live preferences now in the recording menu, uh, then you can see that we've got this option for record only prompt for file name. Now, this is going to be off by default, but you can go in and change this to either give you a pop up uh, when you press record. So at the beginning or at the end of the recording. So uh, when you end recording, you'll be familiar with the box that pops up to say, you know, show file, send to YouTube, send to Descript or whatever. Uh, well, now you'll see an extra pop up over the top of that that allows you to rename that file uh, so that rather than having just whatever Ecamm's default naming is, uh, you can actually name the file at that point. So once you do that, then uh, you then pop out into the regular end screen there. Uh, and this is where we've got another new feature, uh, which is the ability to do quick edits with the service called scenery now here you can see the three new options we've got there apart from show file send to youtube and send to descript is edit with ai audio subtitles or custom edit now these are three of the features that are available in scenery uh, this is the scenery video editor um, so if you are looking for a uh, editing solution with some of those features like transcripts uh, ai and also collaboration so this is a collaborative editor uh, then you can check out scenery i'll leave a link to it in the description um, i personally Personally, I'm not a fan of editing at all, uh, hence the name of the channel, Take One Tech, uh, made in one take with no edits. However, I do understand that this is uh, quite an interesting platform that lots of people have been uh, taking a look at and using. So uh, obviously recommend if you are looking for editing or AI um, uh, editing and transcripts and things like that, uh, then it could be worth taking a look at. And basically now the integration that Ecamm has with this is that from the, uh, from the end screen that we've just seen, obviously it's just going to be able to send things straight through to uh, this to some of those initial um, uh, uh, presets that you've got in here. 
Next up then is the virtual camera. And as I mentioned at the beginning, there is no real difference in terms of the functionality of the camera as such. It's basically still just going to mean that your Ecamm Live production, whatever you're outputting, all of your scenes, all of your Ecamm creation, um, is going to then show up on your computer as a camera that you can then use in things like Zoom. What's changed though is, as I mentioned, the way that this has been implemented. And it is now a system extension level integration, which means that it's going to be available in far more places. So so if previously you had been using Ecamm Live Virtual Camera into Discord, for example, you will know that we had to go into the Mac terminal, type in a little bit of code to get it to show up. Same if you were using Vivo Meetings or other platforms, um, then there was this little uh, uh, thing that we had to do to get it to show up in those platforms using the virtual camera. Uh, sorry, using terminal, I should say. Um, there is also this issue of it just simply not showing up in uh, all of Apple's apps. So Keynote, QuickTime, um, and uh, FaceTime and things like that. Well, basically, the new integration and the new implementation solves all of that. So now you won't need to go into your terminal to type in any code, and it will show up in all of those Apple apps in a, and in a load of other places where previously maybe it wouldn't have. So what you're going to see, though, in terms of the actual process for upgrading when you uh, start up uh, Ecamm or download the update, I should say, then you're going to notice this little pop-up that says update your virtual camera. Click on update now. You'll get a little warning that pops up on screen saying that uh, it's trying to update a system extension. That is exactly correct. Um, it's trying to install this thing at a system level. So you want to just click on OK there. That will take you through to your uh, Apple preferences window or settings window. And you're going to go to your privacy and security settings. And down at the bottom, you're going to see uh, system software from application Ecamm Live Virtual Camera was blocked from loading. And so just click on allow uh, to then allow the new system level extension. So once you do that, though, your Ecamm Live Virtual Camera will uh, will be running. Uh, what you'll also notice, though, is when you are in your main window, uh, now there is a slight change in that uh, previously where you would have seen a little toggle for the virtual camera to be either on or off. Uh, now that is no longer there. It's basically once you've installed it it's just always there and always uh, ready to go uh, so apart from that there is another neat new little feature that's been added uh, and this is related to overlays and what it allows us to do is quite cool things like this so you can see how there's a perspective effect going on here uh, and this is just a new little slider that we've got in ecamm and in fact if i just go into my live demo mode uh, so I've basically just got a, a simple scene here that's got a couple of overlays. So I've got an overlay there with a screen share and I've got an overlay there of a camera. Um, well, what we've got is if you click on the little pencil icon, uh, we've got all the same things as we've uh, had. Love the new uh, layouts, by the way, of uh, overlays since Ecamm 4.1 or 4.0, whatever it was. Um, so yeah, nice to have this sort of central place to change all of these things and a consistent look across the different style of overlay. So nothing new here, but what is new is this little slider here. Uh, and this is the perspective slider. So it's going to start off in the middle like that, uh, but then you can tweak it to basically just adjust the perspective. Uh, you want to be careful, obviously, on how much you adjust it. Uh, I'm not sure how practical that is, uh, but certainly to just give a slight little tilt uh, to things on the screen. Uh, you know, if you've got two people on screen, maybe, or as I'm doing here, just with a little screen share. And as I say, it does apply to all overlays. So you can also click on this one uh, and give a little perspective uh, to that as well. So a really seemingly minor little addition but actually it gives you a lot of uh, versatility in terms of different uh, layouts that you can have on your scenes and just gives some nice little adjustments to the uh, the overall style of it so i'll certainly be playing around with this in some of my uh, designs that uh, that i'm working on uh, so that is uh, the uh, the main key features, I would say. Uh, by the way, I should just go back and say the virtual camera integration uh, that is for uh, Mac OS 13 or higher. So um, the previous Mac OS, we're on 14 now. Uh, so just note that uh, if you are on the uh, anything uh, OS 12 or uh, or before then, uh, then it's still going to be just the regular virtual camera. Sorry, I forgot to uh, mention that before. One thing that you've also got in one of some of the later versions, so I think since uh, this version of macOS, is these reactions. Now, I've actually turned them off on my computer, uh, but it's these things where, you know, you put your thumbs up and you get the little thumb bubble come up or, you know, do other signs and you get fireworks going off behind you. Uh, for me, <laughs> they cause me more problem problems than uh, use because I used to be triggering them by mistake. So I have actually gone ahead and turned them off. Uh, but if you do still want to be able to trigger those, but maybe don't want them triggered by uh, the thumbs up and things like that uh, then you can go and uh, just use the new stream deck plugin so there is one new button for ecamm on their stream deck plugin now uh, which is if i come over to here uh, we've got this one here for reaction effect 
And now you can just drag on reaction effect here um, and you've got all of those different options for balloons, fireworks, thumbs up, thumbs down, rain, lasers, confetti, and hearts. So uh, basically you can create an individual button for each of those and they have got corresponding little icons on here as well uh, so if you just want to be able to trigger those manually uh, without them being triggered by you know when you flail your hands around if you do what i do um, then you can now trigger those for from here from in here uh, there's one more thing that's been added in is you can now include the uh, mac os sonoma wallpaper so the sonoma horizon i believe it's called the wallpaper that is kind of like a moving uh, scene um, if you want you can use that as your green screen background Personally, I always advocate the use of actual real backgrounds as green screen backgrounds rather than make it look like you're flying over the countryside. <laughs> but uh, whatever takes your uh, fancy, you can uh, now use that. It's just basically in the list, on, in the drop down list for your green screen backgrounds. Um, one final thing that is actually really useful is where you've got anything where you want to go to the next scene. So uh, let's say when a, uh, a video plays and you have it go to the next scene when that finishes, or maybe a countdown timer where when the countdown finishes it goes to the next scene uh, well previously that could only actually go to an actual scene whereas now that can go to uh, an automatic scene group so that would mean that if you want something to go into one of those automatic scene groups that's going to cycle between different things uh, you can have it actually go to that rather than just an individual uh, in individual scene so that's uh, kind of useful as well so that's about a summary of all of the uh, features that have been added in there are a few uh, bug fi fixes as always as well so a few improvements made under the hood as well um, that's all for this update though uh, i will leave a link to some of my other ecamm stuff over there on the right hand side thanks for watching i hope you found this uh, useful hope you are loving ecamm as much as i am too thanks also as always to my channel members i really appreciate your support have a wonderful time everyone and i'll see you next time